licensed. roughly, but then now we do online, so it's it's the nation. But yeah, mostly the people that actually walk in that door and f- are physically there. There's about a, about a thousand our target. But audience. these are used car dealers. Used car dealers. So you're not out there necessarily pelting the airways with commercials. Yeah, I'm not on out TV. there chasing down soccer moms in their minivans. Come to the auction. But you know. for your optometry clinic, you do run commercials on oh, radio. Oh, I chase for the down soccer moms. soccer moms in their minivans. So it's yes. so again, every business is going to have a different go-to move. Right. Everyone's going to have a different go-to move. So if you're listening right now and you're looking for go-to moves, go to thrive15.com and we have hundreds of trainings about just this specific subject. Now, step number three, you must document your lead conversion system that produces results. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Whether it's documenting a sales system or documenting any any system, Hillary, why do you have to at some point have to document systems? Like in, in in your business, I mean, what are some of the things that you have documented now that you use over and over again. Um, we document all of our processes and procedures because you have to hold your um, employees up to a specific standard um, and you have to ensure that they are all following the same processes. I have a question. Sure. Do you get your hair cut at the same place all the time? I do. And do you? does she kind of know the flow? I mean, does she, she know does. what you're looking to do? She knows. Are you changing it up right now or is this the normal you? This is the normal me. Okay. So I saw your press photos. So you're l- looking good in both occasions. But here's the thing is, do you? Did, if you had to switch stylists tomorrow, would it freak you out? It probably would, yes. So I'm going to give you an example. We have a men's grooming lounge called mm-hmm. Elephant in the Room. It's mm-hmm. one of the businesses I'm a, a part owner of. And we have three locations. And Z, do you know how we solved this issue about people being freaked out about changing stylists? Z, do you want to guess? Well, you you gave them such a low entry level to get in that they were like, okay, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Well, first, it is a dollar for your first haircut. Boom. But let's say now you're in and you're, you okay. are a member. You love it. Right. Which, okay. by the way, a little over 60% of the people who come in for the $1 uh, first time become members. We have thousands of members. Okay. When they come in, how do you think that we go from stylist to stylist? Every week, maybe a different stylist, maybe the same, but we keep them loyal to the brand. How do we communicate the hair, the look they want? That's a good question. How do you do that? Do you take a picture? This you... just in. We document. We take photos oh. of your. So we go. You you want that mop to look like that? You don't want that 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 look of your mop to ever stop. You want it to look like that all the time. Don't stop the mop look. It's like we take a photo of it and we document it. So that way, next time you come in, it's like, hey, yeah. I want I want to go with that look, and then it's the same every time. And yeah. I have a funny story to tell you about my trip to San Diego. It's beautiful. I go in there to San Diego because I'm always spying on other barber shops. Oh yeah. I go in there and this guy says. So uh, do you want the wet look or the dry look? Yeah. And I said, uh, he's an Italian guy, seriously. Yeah. And I go, I'm going to go with the, uh, the dry look, you know, because my hair, it's like fine hair. Anyway, he goes, all right. He goes, and he puts this like, I don't know what you put on someone's hair, but he slicks it back. And my wife looks at me and she goes, good job, Guido. Like she just like laughing. <laughs> Seriously, when the guy walks no, out, my he, wife's like, "He slicks it back. That's the wet." I no, I just told him I'm going to dry. So I said, "Hey, can I get my hair like shampooed? I kind of want to have. I have a speaking event today. I want to get the dry look." He goes, "Absolutely." So we do the shampoo. Absolutely. <laughs> Not kidding. We come back and he goes, "So do you want the wet look or the dry look?" And I'm like, "I definitely I just, want the dry look." And he's you. like, Psh. And he does it again. <laughs> <laughs> so I end up walking out, like looking like my hair oh, is yeah. like a slicked back yeah. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> producers are laughing. No, but I'm not kidding. And this was a thing where there's a communication gap. And it obviously wasn't a repeatable system. And I don't even think he thoroughly understood what the wet look or the dry look yeah, was. Yeah, he's going to do the same thing. <laughs> Either way, I tell you, you, you look good with the, with, with, with the wet look. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the thing is we've got to be able to document our systems otherwise you're going to otherwise you're going to repeat the same basic things over and over now step number 4 once you have developed a high quality system a, a quality system you must rec- recruit a players to execute your system uh, guy kawasaki this is the venture capitalist the best selling author and a member of the apple marketing team that introduced the macintosh computer into the planetary system in 1984. He's the one who helped market the Apple computer, you know, made the legendary Super Bowl commercial. He says, ideas are easy, implementation is hard. I would even say that implementation is impossible if you don't have good people. Z, why is it so important for everyone listening right now to not settle for okay people? If they have a great system, why is it absolutely important that they must not settle for okay people and aim for great people. You know what? You, okay, I tell you, this is going to sound weird, but you have great. great. You know what the opposite? You know what the killer of great is? Uh, 
Uh, it's not bad. Bad? No. You Terrible, would think it, you would think it's bad. Horrible. But the, the good <laughs> thing the good thing about bad is just like Hillary said, it's recognizable and you cut it out, it's like a little cancer and you get rid of that thing. Okay. But good. Ooh. Oh. Wow. Good. That's the killer of great. You're saying good is the enemy of great? Yes, I'm saying good is the enemy of great. Now, and when we ever, come back, I will tell you why. Now, for anyone listening right now on this Thanksgiving edition, if you are finding yourself, one, you're hungry, I encourage you to go in there. If you already had lunch earlier, there's a lot of, the way the way, way, way turkey works is you've had the, the official turkey, but there's always leftovers. you got turkey sandwiches all week. you got turkey, I mean, maybe even all month if you freeze it, I don't know. But there's a lot more to be had. Get back in that refrigerator, find yourself something good, and then come back here. Thrive Time Show. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the special holiday edition, the special holiday Thanksgiving edition here of the Thrive Time Show. Typically, it's during your drive time home, but today it's probably you're probably at your house. You're probably marinating. Maybe maybe you've spent a lot of time with family. I, I don't know if in your family it's 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 maybe your family's perfect, and you never have a situation where you have a confrontation with an aunt or an uncle who's trying to high pressure you on a new multi level marketing scheme they're a part of. But Z, this is a thing that I've had back in the day. Z, have you ever yeah. had that where you've been a high pressure pitched by a family member for multi level? During the Thanksgiving meal, has this ever happened? Absolutely, and I, and I just I just made a little gift for everybody watching out there on Facebook Live. Well, what what is it? What is it? Well, yeah. it's just my little Thanksgiving thank you. It's oh. a it's a hand turkey. A hand I just turkey. Made oh it. wow! And you can enjoy that on Facebook Live. That's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. You're like the I, Picasso yeah, of, of Thanksgiving hand yeah, art. You might be right. <laughs> Z, have you ever had a, a political quarrel? A, a political disagreement that has occurred at your Thanksgiving table? Over pie, and that's the worst time to have it. I, I mean, you're, you're sitting down, you just got your whip topping on your pumpkin pie, and you're sitting there, you're about ready to take a fork, and some uncle walks up to you and just says the thing, and just trying to poke a fight. See, I believe this is what happens. Is I believe everyone is excited. The meal Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Oh, yeah. But you sit down, every, there's, a big, there's a big anticipation. We're thinking about all the food we're going to bring, all the food we're going to eat, we're going to see everybody. And the, when you, the meal starts, it always starts well, good. Oh, yeah. It's a good deal. You're pat, you, you've, you've shared the Thanksgiving story. You've said your prayer. You've passed out the accoutrements. You're all eating. Oh, yeah. Now, once, the, once you've stopped eating and the conversation begins, this is where I've seen it take a, a left turn <laughs> many times in the past. Oh, yeah. Because what happens is after people have eaten and they've talked about, like, how are you? What major are you studying? Oh, my gosh. It's good to see you. Is that a new hair color? After they've had that, it somehow gets into that political and religious discussion. And here's what I tell you to do. Just come back out here in the garage, listen to the Thrive Time show, and then go back in. Do not participate in the religious or the political discussions, or you're going you're gonna to end up with a divisive situation. Don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Uh, uncles and aunts and maybe a grandparent, they'll, 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 they'll go fishing. They're Thanksgiving's gonna, fishing time. Somebody they're, has they're, already they're, said they're, at your they're, table, they're, like, yeah, they're, Donald, they're, I heard uh, I was reading a, a book called uh, Why Donald Trump is the Antichrist, and I've discovered <laughs> that he basically could be the Antichrist. What, what say you? And you're going, whoa, <laughs> no, oh, I'm going to go to the garage and listen to the Thrive Time show. I my pumpkin pie. Now, you know one of the most non-divisive people I've ever met, a lady who's a great lady, a lady who's been super endorsed by one of my good friends here. Z, 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 do you know who it is? Jenny. She's in Hillary, the room here. Hillary Jenny. Yes, Miss Hillary Jenny. How are you? I'm doing great. Now, you run an office. You manage a lot of people. Uh, and as you built the, the sales super system over there at Team, one, you know, you, you've developed these systems, but now you got to recruit top quality people. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to do it? What tips do you have? Enlighten us. Sure. Typically, one of three ways. Okay. Um, my best hires have been people I have just met in life and immediately um, was impressed with. When you say life, are you at yoga class and it's like yoga music and then you're like, hey, do you want to come work here? Or what do you mean? It, sometimes, yes, possibly. Really? Are um, you yoga? Are you into yoga? No, I do that CrossFit crazy stuff. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I met uh, somebody who was a trainer for a um, an organization, a, a charitable organization. I thought she was fantastic, mm. um, and she was one I, t I took. But um, I also I like to look at my competition 
and who does really well for them. And sometimes I've taken a couple. You things. hire people from your competition? I do. You are you have no boundaries. You're a sick freak. Hey, I need good people. Okay, all right. So one is you're not networking. And networking. Two, yeah. your competition. Uh-huh. What's move number three? Three, I use LinkedIn a lot. I found some, depending on the, on the, on the type of role I'm looking for, but sales, I've been successful on LinkedIn. Really? I have. Do you ever use MySpace? Oh, that is aging you. <laughs> book, do you ever use book face <laughs> well i walked into my myspace i haven't been on there for like a decade i go in there yeah. i, I thought some three job offers i got three job offers yeah Boom, i got some guys like who are saying if i wire the money right now yeah, i could instantly be successful i'm like okay <laughs> are you a saudi good. prince obviously i will send it right now so no but seriously so that, those are your moves those are those are my those are my successful hires now i'm going to read you again a notable quote this is from guy kawasaki he says ideas are easy implementation is hard um, Z, do you remember life before point and click back in the day in the computer before you could point and click on a computer before the I'm mouse? I'm so old. I remember, yeah. You remember the screen with the green letters on it? Oh, yeah. Remember uh, Oregon Trail, that video game? Uh, I don't think I saw that one. Did you ever play that I game? I did Pong. Uh-huh. I remember Pong. Pong, yeah. Well, Oregon Trail was a game back in the day. You'd, you'd have like a librarian who was the default now IT guy at your school. Yeah. And they're trying to convince us that the internet was something we needed to learn about. Okay. And his kids were like, yeah, like anyone's going to actually use the internet. No way, bro. Right? And so our librarians try to convince us that computers are a thing. You got that floppy disk you put in the drive. And when you'd hit enter, it would go, eh. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. And it was a thing where back in the day, if you wanted to type, if you want to get your computer to do something, you had to type a line of code and then hit enter. And so all the high school kids I went to school with in middle school were like, uh, I'm definitely not going to type a line of code. I'll move on. Yeah. I'll just get the book. DOS. Yeah. And so Steve Jobs is going, hey, here's the deal. I, he, by the way, he stole the mouse idea from Xerox, but he says, here's this new idea I had. I stole. And we're going to tell the world about this new computer called the Macintosh. And so Guy Kawasaki was the guy who helped introduce that computer into the, into the workplace, into the workforce, into America. But I will tell you this is that he could not have introduced his computer into the world if he didn't have great people. Sorry. He had Guy Kawasaki. He had Wozniak. He had a great team of people. So if you're listening right now and your product isn't taking off, but it's a great product, maybe you have some, some loons. Maybe you have some crazies. Maybe you have some non-compliant people working with you. Maybe you need to upgrade that team, and maybe you need to implement the moves that Hillary just shared. I tell you what, and this is going to be hard to hear. Here we go. But sometimes you've got a good employee, mm. and what you really should have is a great one. Oh, and that's why I was saying earlier, Clay, that that bad is not the killer of great because bad is easily recognized to go. Okay, you're bad. You're a bad dude. You know, you're out of here. It's that good. That's not wanting to go to the great. You go, why am I not growing? Why are we just stagnant? Why? You know, they don't have the hunger. They don't have the competition. They don't have the courage. You know, and they're not great at what they do. Firing someone who's good or replacing someone who's good is it's probably one of the most difficult things to do as a job owner. This is why I love the New England Patriots, though, because what happens is, is that every year it's like a fresh roster, and they honestly are constantly pruning that tree and trying to improve that roster. Oklahoma University, where you two, got, uh, you know, Z, you're a big fan, and mm-hmm. Hillary, you graduated oh, from OU. Right. Uh, every year, Bob Stoops has to upgrade that lineup. He has to make the best, uh, most uh, uh, winnable. He has, he has to put the best product on the field, period. He's got to do that every year. And there's somebody out there who he's got to go, hey, uh, I'm not going to offer a scholarship to you this year, but I am going to offer it to this person because I only have a limited number of scholarships and I've got to give one to the best player. So these are tough calls you have to make in the world of business on this beautiful Thanksgiving. Step number five, you must identify your biggest limiting factors and eliminate them one by one. Jack Welch says this, face reality as it is, not as it was or as you wish it to be. That is a tough thought to have that you, here's the most successful CEO in the history of American business, arguably. He grew GE from fourth, uh, grew, grew GE by 4,000% during his tenure. Remember, GE was a big company that had become stagnant. He takes over, it grows the thing by 4,000%. And he says, you must face reality as it is, not as you wish it to be. And I think one of the hardest things there is when you see a limiting factor or a limiting membrane, having the courage to confront it. And so when we come back, We're going to talk about these self-evaluations. I'm going to ask you a bunch of rhetorical questions, and I want you to rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. And if you give yourself a low ranking, 
then you need to fix that. But we're going to come back to the Thrive Time Show. We're going to have a very honest self-assessment here on this beautiful Thanksgiving Thrive Time Show. Live, local, now. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Hello, Thrive Nation, and welcome back to the Thrive Time Show, this beautiful Thanksgiving edition. You are in the right place to learn how to start and grow a business. And on this Thanksgiving edition, we're broadcasting from the box that rocks. And one of the things about the box that rocks is that it gives you that transparency. You can look in, Z, and you can see the Thrive15.com world headquarters. And one of the things we can see right now is my 